and then we get to the expulsion of Spain during the reign of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella in 1492. It ain't that you scared of the dog, no. Welcome back to the Ready Brew. My name's T. Edge, King Beaker for the Brew. And where we left off, we were discussing some of the things that transpired that made uh, Jewishness illegal and also intolerable. In the book, The History and Reign of Ferdinand and Isabella the Catholic, on page 170. The Queen, however, still averse to violent measures to suspend the operation of ordinance until more lenient policy than first tried. By her command accordingly, the Archbishop of Bill, Cardinal Medeza, drew up a catechism exhibiting the different points of the Catholic faith and instructed the clergy throughout his diocese to spare no pains in illuminating the benighted Israelites by means of friendly organization and a candid exposition of the true principles of Christianity. On page 325, we see that uh, the Jews were also expelled from England, France, and other parts of Europe, as well as Portugal under circumstances of particular atrocity a few years later. So there's not this great abandoning together to welcome the Jews into these countries, um, which also lets us know that the Jews could not have participated in the transatlantic slave trade as benefactors, being that no European country saw it worth dealing with them to make any gains. So this idea that's been passed on through history um, by our scholarly folk um, is a, a smoke screen so that you can't see the bigotry from uh, what is known as um, Christianity. It says, um, furthermore, it cannot be denied that Spain at this period surpassed most of the nations of Christendom in religious enthusiasm or, to speak more correctly, in bigotry. And if we go back in this same book, we can see what happened to our people. On page 163, it reads, under the Visigoth Empire, the Jews multiplied exceedingly in the country and were permitted to acquire considerable power and wealth. But no sooner had their Aryan masters embraced the Orthodox faith than they began to testify their zeal by pouring on the Jews the most pitiless storm of persecution. One of their laws alone condemned the whole race to slavery. And Montesquieu remarks without much exaggeration that to the Gothic code may be traced all the maxims of the modern inquisition, the monks of the 15th century only copying in reference to the Israelites, the bishops of the seventh. Letting you know that this thing happened in the seventh century, which was the 600s, and is now being copied in the 15th century, which was the 1400s. The things that we saw happen to our people here in America, the lynchings, the hangings, the burnings, all of these things all happened throughout history. There was nothing new under the sun. These are the things that happened to our people. These are the things that preceded what we know today as racism. It wasn't initially racism. It was hatred of the people known as Hebrew, the Israelites, AKA the Jews. And just to enforce things, on page 26, the history of the Jews of Spain and Portugal, we see canon number eight at the Council of Toledo. By command of my, our most pious king, Urgica, who inflamed with zeal for the Lord and impelled by ardor, for their holy faith, not only wishes to avenge the insult offered to Christ's cross, but to prevent by severity the ruin they had savagely engaged to bring on his country and people. The perjurers themselves and their posterity to be deprived of all their property and possessions, the same being confiscated to the national treasury, 
that they be deprived of their homes in the provinces of Spain and be subjected to the perpetual slavery under those he may assign them to and so remain forever, nor shall any opportunity by connivance be afforded them of recovering their liberty while they continue obstinate in their unbelief, for they are branded with numberless transgressions. We likewise ordain that certain Christian slaves that belong to such Jews as shall be selected at the king's will shall either receive from their owners property as much as a king by his authority shall grant or written letters of manumission and the duties hitherto performed for the public by the Jews are to be performed to the full extent without Page 326. Those of different opinion acknowledged that what had been said was true, but that it was without reason that the Jews had been banished from Spain, France, England, Scotland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and many adjoining states from the whole of Flanders, Burgundy, and many places in Germany. Those princes did not set a higher value on the increase of their revenues than the interests of religion. They had perceived the dangerous consequences of allowing such a people to remain in their dominions, for they were apt to impose their pernicious errors on the simple and vulgar, that in fact, it would be highly imprudent to place confidence in men who were so in inveterate against our religion, who were bound by no ties nor obligations, but would be ready to sacrifice everything to their interests by prying into the secrets of state and giving intelligence to our enemies. It would be much more to the public benefit that they should be banished immediately when they could only carry away the wealth they had scraped together in other countries. This, they said, would be more advisable than allowing them to remain longer and then send them away after they had amassed considerable wealth, which they scrupled not to obtain by the most fraudulent means. As the latter opinion was more agreeable to the passion of Emmanuel, influenced by it in December of 1496, he issued a decree from Musia, ordering all Jews and Moors who would not embrace the Christian faith to quit his dominions. A day was fixed after which all who remained in Portugal were to lose their liberty. Three months was the time allowed to them. Again, you can continue to read this on your own, but here we see the persecution that our brethren endured throughout this uh, society. This isn't something that just started in 1619. This isn't something that just started um, with the rise of Jim Crow and desegregation. These things have been going on ever since the rise of the Catholic or Christian faith. So to my brothers, my Hebrew kinfolk, you're not black, you're brown. You are to love yourself. This pain runs deep within us. This is something that we can't get over without the help of the Most High God. So it is on us to take our time and find relationship with God so that we can become those people that he would have us to be. To those who are Christian, who didn't know this history, or uh, this information, it's time for you to begin to love on your brothers. When you see the, the deplorable things that are happening, these things are not just something that happened because of people who found themselves on hard times. These things have been happening for centuries through many different occurrences that led to embedded, fragile mindsets within our group of people. I think that it should be noted that the time of the Gentiles that the scripture talks about is a time of the Catholic Church, not just the Roman Catholic Church, not just the Eastern Orthodox Church, but the Catholic Church known as Christianity. This faith is not the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They did bring some things down through history that were passed on by the apostles. But most things that we learn today in this religion are man-made and come from these Gentile uh, creators of the religion. So going forward, 
it again is on us to form a relationship with our Savior, with our Most High God, so that we can see who we are to be moving forward. Before I go, um, I want to thank all of my most recent subscribers. But I ask that you continue to bear with me as I gather this information. As you see how many parts this piece of work is, continue to pass this information on so that people can see um, how uh, we've been, I don't want to use the term deceived, but how we've been manipulated throughout time by those who are called leaders. Uh, when we began to understand that it's not about us, it's not about disparaging any group of people, but shining a light on the truth and what is real, then we can begin to ask God to show us those things that we need to see so that we can begin to come out of the illusion and so that we can be uh, more apt to growing into those people that we are called to be. If you find this information uh, valuable, um, if you turn your phone to the side, you'll see the little button in the corner down here. You just click that button and subscribe. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me here at The Ready Brew. Uh, if you think I got something wrong, leave those comments in the comment section below. But in the meantime, peace.